credit one Charleston Open is quickly approaching and it's happening in April. Today, I talk one-on-one -on -one with the tournament director, Bob Moran, for this edition of Quentin's Close-Ups. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and like Quentin's Close-Ups on Facebook. Bob Moran, welcome back to Quentin's Close-Ups. Thank you, Quentin. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to have you out here. At the Credit One Stadium, which has been renovated tremendously well. Pretty, it's a pretty place, isn't it? Yes, indeed. <laughs> I'm amazed with it. Very impressed. You guys did a great job with no, that. Thank you very much. We're very proud of it. Yes, sir. And obviously, you are extremely proud to be the director of the Credit One Charleston opening. Yes, I am. Open, which is coming up in April. Mm -hmm. Where are you right now as director? So with the tournament itself, you know, we're about, not that I know this exact date, but we're 82 days away. Yeah. Um, so we're full, fully engaged in ticket sales, uh, finalizing some sponsorship partnerships, really taking a look at a look look hard at what we look like on site for the fans and the experience and really trying to grow that. And then we have two projects. We're building a new deck right now, yeah. um, finishing up a project in the stage house, which is an awning over our player area. So we're kind of in this world where we're finishing up some projects, really focused on pushing hard on ticket sales and sponsorship sales and at the same time building out the experience that our fans will have when they're here and the players and the players so what will that experience look like in the next five years uh, it'll continue to get better um, we have a great um, ownership group in the Navarro family who push us every day to get better sure. so um, and it's always about what's new yes, so if I don't have a project going I'm in trouble um, but the player experience the fan experience will continue to evolve uh, more opportunities on the food and beverage side, on the technology side, mm -hmm. how they're viewing, how they're consuming what we put out here. Um, you know, last year was especially, I don't know if you know this, but we were the term of the year last That's year. That's right. Um, first time in a long time. Congratulations. Thank you. We strive for. Now my job is to make sure we do that every year. Sure. Um, so we're excited about what that can be. But I, I think what fans will realize is that every year we're looking to get better and we'll continue to evolve at what that looks like and feels like. And I want to get to all that in just a second, sure. but I know five top 15 players have already entered the 2023 Charleston Open. Seven. Seven, wow. Seven, yes. We're still rolling. We're rolling. We're rolling. Yeah. So who's that one to watch right now? Well, you know, a fan favorite from last year, our final was um, Belinda Benchik, who yes. won, who's number 12, I think, and she'll continue to uh, rise in the rankings, but owns Jabor from Tunisia. She's number two in the world. She became a fan favorite here because of the way she plays, her attitude. She's emotional, and, and I love owning We've watched her for a long time. So to see her that success this year, she's number two in the world. It's pretty special. And then Jesse Pagula, who is um, number three in the world. And uh, they just won the United Cup in Australia. So the, the tour just kicked off um, in Australia, week one and two. Um, both had great success in their first couple weeks. So those are two players that we really keep an eye on. And then you also have to... to um, watch our past champions. Madison Keys is oh, playing yes. really well. We have Sloan Stevens oh, coming yes. back. Veronica Kudermatova mm -hmm. is now moved into the top 10 for the first time in her career. So a lot of players to watch. Wow. Yeah. So I, and I want to ask this question a little bit later, but I can ask it right now. So with those particular players right now, Bob, how does that help with, as far as t ticket sales? Um, you know, it's interesting. People ask me that all the time. I think I always have to have a strong field. But I think people come here for a couple reasons. One, they know it's going to be a great experience. Um, number two, Charleston. Yes. Uh, you know my biggest problem, Quentin? I'm probably the only tournament in the world that we struggle to get people here at night for our night sessions. You know why? Because they love coming to Charleston yeah. and going downtown yeah, to eat. Yeah. And it's something we continue to work on. But when I talk to other tournament directors, they all look at me like I'm crazy because <laughs> they do really well at night and it's okay during the day. Yes. We do really well during the day and we're okay at night. Mm. Um, so it's an interesting thing. So. You know, um, when you ask me if those players make a difference, I think they do. I think people, our fans have to realize, and they do, that we're always going to have a great field. The best that we can put out there, there's never going to be anything that we don't do to make sure that we have a, a strength of field that's really top notch. Um, but I think they come here for the experience. They're coming here for Charleston. They're, they're coming for the overall package. Less about um, exactly who's playing. What is your strategic plan to get these players and participants here at night and spectators? Well, that's what we're you know we're working on that now. So we're really working on happy hour opportunities. Cool. We're putting live music out here, um, our food and beverage offerings, making sure people understand that we're going to put a world class um, F and B effort out here. And to be honest, it's okay because we love bringing people here from Charleston every day. Quinn, I get a wrap up 
where people are coming from. Mm. And like just yesterday, at the end of the day, I see California, I see Texas, I see uh, Utah, wow. and I'm seeing those things, and it gets me excited, especially for my partners in the city and my partners at the CVB, sure. who love to see more and more people coming and filling hotel rooms and going to the restaurants sure. and the other things. So I want people here, but at the same time, I want people in Charleston. Yes, sir. You know, I asked, obviously, my man this the other day at CB, John yep, Powell. John, yep. But is the Credit One Charleston Open becoming difficult for you all to host? No. Why would you ask that? <laughs> it is a lot of logistics behind it, resources. Is it becoming difficult? No, no, not at all. I, it's it's become a little bit easier. This new building we built mm -hmm. houses all the players. I have less, less temporary facilities, more permanent facilities um, you know we're, we're we're different than anything else in Charleston mm -hmm. we're global yes sir right now there's 65 countries represented in the top 200 players in the world we have over a hundred um, countries that view our matches every day with our international TV broadcast right. we have people coming from across the globe we have people coming from overseas so logistically no I think we're, we're really good at what we do um, we communicate with players all the time and that means from the day they leave until yesterday I was talking to a couple players in over in Australia that communication is constant um, I think logistically for us it's always about traffic control parking mm -hmm. things like that so we're always working on planning what those those experiences look like so for me a, a fan experience starts when they buy a ticket with us or even that when they're looking at buying a ticket for us what's that experience like online and then when they get here what's the traffic plan what is the parking plan how do they get from the parking lot to our gates what's that gate experience like and then once we get them in here we're really good at that experience right it's it's really making sure the logistics from start to finish are really good really strong so now that you have this refurbished stadium what is the parking and traffic plans well, the parking and traffic plans, you know, we used to close down the street in front, mm. um, but Daniel Allen's also grown quite a bit, yeah. right? And the reason we closed the street was more security. We're an international event, sure. and that's really close to the stadium. Oh, yeah. um, and we had to have a plan of getting the players. We used to stay at the clubhouse and then get over here, so we needed to use the road. Well, the beauty of it is that the players are all here now in this new facility, so I don't need the road as much. Mm. So last year, we didn't close the street down, which... I know our residents were happy with, and the traffic flow was really good. There were no issues. I had no problems. Um, we have great partners at, over at Benefit Focus and Blackbot who support us with some with parking that they they offer us and that we support. We continue to look at spaces under bridges everywhere. We're we're trying to gather that, and at the same time, we're trying to minimize the impact we have on parking in local businesses. And I think we've gotten to a really good place there. So, what is the size and impact? of this uh, tent event right now? Oh, from an economic impact study, we're gonna do another one this year, okay. but I think it's well over $40 million. Wow. Yeah, between, we alone, Quinn, I, I talk this all the time, we're responsible for a lot of hotel rooms, a lot. Sure. And it's in the 2,500 to 3,000 room nights that yeah. we're responsible for, just for the week of the tournament. Hmm. So that's players, TV, volunteers, sure. staffing. Sure. We're responsible for all of that. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a huge impact just from our staffing perspective. Then, as I was talking, we have people coming from all over the world who are coming to this event. So what will that staffing perspective be in the next five years as this tournament grows? Um, I don't see it growing that much. Um, for the simple reason is we don't really have the potential of becoming um, a bigger women's event. The mm. only thing that could change is if we bring the men into play, which is going to be a goal of ours. Yeah. It's, uh, it's something we want to bring men and women here together. It's We know that's what um, fans like. We know it's what players actually like. Yeah. So um, we are constantly looking at what that opportunity is. It's not there in front of us right, right now, right, right. but I can tell you every day on my workflow, it's a conversation I, I continue to have. And what other studies are you looking at to make that happen? Uh, well, what I have to look at is what the ATP Tour looks like. Um, and their rules and regulations. There's a tournament in Houston right now. That's a men's event the same week as us. Um, and so I always have to look at what's available. And right now, today, there's not anything available. Now, that doesn't mean I don't look at a men's event at another time of year. Mm. But as you know, we're a pretty darn robust concert schedule, too. I mean, we did 21 events last year. Um, so really, we're really trying to figure out schedules at all times. But um, I would say priority is definitely trying to bring a men's event in addition to this women's event.
And I know that you all obviously have this refurbished stadium here on Daniel Island. How much has corporate sponsorship spiked since the stadium has actually been refurbished? Um, well, it's it's growing as we speak. We're, you know, we set a record both on ticket sales last year and sponsorship sales last year. Oh. And we are tracking to exceed those numbers from last year to this year. We're, we're tracking very strong this year. Our ticket sales are ahead. Our sponsorship sales are ahead. Uh, by how much? Right now, I would say our goal is about 25%, and I think we'll hit both. And now, uh, this might be a silly question, but will you all have some sort of cap on ticket sales? Oh, I wish we did. No, we, we, we right now, I mean, a great day for us, because we expanded this stadium for music, to be honest. Yes, sir. Um, so we could hit, you know, certain numbers. We're... If we hit a men's and women's event, I bet you we could fill this. Mm. Um, from a women's only perspective, a good day for us is 8,500 people. We have the potential of putting 12,000 people if we want in here. Wow. Yep. So when do you expect Bob to reach that peak for ticket sales? For this year? Yes, sir. Well, we're, it's a big walk up for us. Mm. So, well, so you could call me and say, hey, Bob, I love Madison Keys. Is she going to be in the finals on okay. Sunday? Because I want to make my, guess what? She's got to win four rounds before she gets to the final. Right. <laughs> so we are definitely a walk-up crowd because fans have players they want to see. Mm. And, you know, it used to be what I would call the Serena Williams effect. Sure. When Serena was here, you know, our ticket sales on her nights or days would definitely spike. And the more she won, the more our, uh, you know, our walk-up sales. Right. Um, so I would say our walk-up sales can be anywhere from 15 to 25% of our total. Wow. Yeah. So... Let me ask you this. You, you talked about this earlier, but Daniel Allen is growing. Mm -hmm. So how do you grow with that smart growth? You know, it's just being good partners mm -hmm. and, you know, constant communication with the business association, with the neighborhood association, sure. uh, making sure we're hearing if there's issues and dealing with those issues. My big thing, and, you know, it's the world we live in, Jay Quinn. Uh, I live here. My team lives here. We work here. We don't come in, rock, run an event and go. So we're part of the community. And if there are issues, we, we really urge people to come to us as opposed to going to social or going to the press. If there's an issue, come to us and we'll, we'll do our best to fix it if it's in our within our world to fix it. Yeah, one-on-one. -on -one. Yep. Uh, how much did the Timmons uh, tournament grew in the number of participants and spectators over the past for two years? Two, so the year before, we didn't have any. Right, of course. So last year was the first year because we went um, basically two years without fans. Right. Um, so last year, so I have to go back to 19. and oh, we yeah. grew, So we went from, I'd say we grew about 35% from 19 to 20, uh, 22. Wow. So how do you build on that capacity, Bob? As in? It's, you know, ticket sales and, you know, mm -hmm. you know participant engagement and bringing more people here. Yeah, well, it's interesting. The, the capacity, we have the capacity. That's, right. that's not a problem. Do you know what everybody wants, though? They want to sit where you and I are sitting right now, right? My job is to make sure that a person who's sitting upstairs is having just as good an experience as someone here. That's how you grow capacity. So what's that experience like when they're here, mm -hmm. when they're out on our grounds? I mean, it, it's those are the things that we, we have to do and continue to do. So what has been that new growth for the Credit One Charleston Open over the past year or so? As far as the, the capacity side? Oh, well, you know, growth in general. You have the new, well, the refurbished city. Yeah, uh, people wanted to get back out, Quentin, mm -hmm. quite honestly. I, I think anybody who's in the live event business, be it CWE or anybody, any of our partners here, yeah. um, will tell you that growth in 2022 was all because people were ready to get back out. They were ready to get back out in the mix. They wanted to be around people. They wanted that experience. And... Uh, you know, we're not inside, we're outside. So you feel healthier here. You feel good about being here. Um, and be it, you know, I get together you know, pretty much monthly with the River Dogs and the Stingrays and the Battery. And we talk about these things all the time. And I think you'll see everyone saw really good growth in 2022. What's our job now? How do we continue that growth? Mm. Um, tennis, for example, golf, for example, when COVID was on, those are the things you could do, right? So you saw an exponential shift of people participating in tennis and pickleball and golf so now how do we keep that going how do we capture that and, and keep that that flow of people playing again participating again that's up to us and how do we do it and, that, and those are things you know we're, we do a lot of clinics here we're really promoting pickleball here sure. all of those things we're really trying to bring to life and I know this is a redundant question Bob but how are you keeping the core of the tournament consistent well the core of the tournament is how we treat people hmm. 
that's the core. We're a team, we're a small team, but how we treat people is what we wake up every day. How do we treat people from start to finish? How do they feel um, when they're here? We have a great core of 400 volunteers too that are participating with us every year. And you know, as I tell them when we get together, when they're our front lines, how people feel here and are treated here. Um, so when they come through the front gate, they're usually running into a volunteer. And our volunteers are special. Yes. They're, they're really committed to making the experience for everybody really um, a strong one. And then it's the same thing with players. Oh, yeah. You know, so players are coming from Indian Wells to Miami. Mm. And Miami is fast and furious. And, they're, you know, it's, an, it's Miami. Yes. And then they get off the plane here. And it's kind of funny. Is a lot of players, they just take this deep breath and they're like, okay, I, I feel more like I'm home. Mm. Um, and how we greet them when they're at the airport sure. to the moment they're here. They loved all the new facilities. They've been a new locker rooms, ah. new gym, wow. new training. That huh. up there, that third tier, yes, sir. that's all player dining up there. Wow. There's no else on the tour where they can go get their meals come out and watch you know their friends or or their next opponent right. play on this court it has become it's, it's a beautiful space and they, they really appreciate everything we did to make their experience here better Charleston is already that one yes sir. now their experience on sites is on par with what the Charleston experience is like exactly. so they stay downtown they mm. go to restaurants there are players who come to me and say here's my schedule Bob yes, I'm going to these four restaurants yes. what do you think right. they're, they're <laughs> planning that in Indian Wells and Miami like okay right. when I'm in Charleston what are those restaurants and what are those shops and what am I going to do when I'm there mm. it's amazing yes, but that's sir. what they're thinking about right. so we have that experience for them when they're here now it's it's just full on an envelope of a perfect experience for when they're in Charleston. And so when you talk about the volunteers, uh, what is that, that pace right now going leading up to the events? Yeah, actually, so we just put volunteers up January, well, actually, end of December, we mm. put some notices out. Anything you see coming from us right now, from a social perspective, you'll see a, a button to volunteer. Um, and yeah, no, we're, uh, I, I talked to our volunteer coordinator yesterday. Um, we're ahead on volunteers, we're ahead on ball kids. Huh. Two very important things yes. <laughs> uh, to, to operate here. So things are going well all the way around. That is amazing. So so what has been the Credit One Charleston Open's approach to enhancing and diversifying your programming? Enhancing programming? Well, you know what we see here at tennis. Okay, so year-round? Yes, sir. So year-round, we are a very vibrant tennis community. We have over 800 members. We have over 250 kids in our programs. Because now we're, we're two facilities. Sure. We have this facility, LTP Daniel Island. We have LTP Mount Pleasant. Mm. Um, you know, we have a school here. I don't know if you know that. So we have about, I think, just a little over 60 kids who are training and going to school here. And a full full group of teachers up in our clubhouse. Sure. So every day kids are going to school. Um, and those are kids who really want to um, maybe play tennis at the next level. Uh, they want to go to college. They want a scholarship. Yes. Or they want to play professionally. And, and we try and provide those pathways from, you know, when you're five years old all the way through. You know, it's almost the same thing as when, you know, Shelby Rogers started sure. here. You know, she was seven years old on center court as a ball kid. Huh. You know, and what you want to be? You yes. want to be a professional tennis player. And what better way to be inspired yes. than to be a part of this yes. and to have this in Charleston? Absolutely. And I know you talked about it earlier, but let me ask you, how have you embraced new and emerging technology to enhance the credit of one Charleston experience for guesses? Yeah, so we, we introduced a brand new app last year. <laughs> so real-time news, real-time, they can handle their tickets in real-time. They can order food in real time. They can order merchandise right. in real time. Everything is at that handheld app, and everything is up to speed, up to date. So now the, the job is how do we make sure people are using it? Yes, and sir. so um, making that experience easy when they, you know, we're, we were talking today about what do we need to message our folks, and it's when are their tickets coming? What new things are we doing? What are those food and beverages? How to download our app? It's so important because you can get everything at your fingertips right there. And you know, we can message people out, hey, we have an autograph signing going on. We have live music in one hour after the match lets out. Right. You know, so using technology to our advantage, but also to the fans' advantage, making things easier for them when they get here. And I miss having my Apple Quentin spokes up. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, one day I'll get it again. But let me ask you, Doc, Bob, you know, when you talk about that website, how is your website evolving with the new technology that is actually available? Well, that's it. You know, really identity. 
it's a little bit scary sometimes too because we can track people where they're from you know all of the analytics that you sure. want at your fingertips to better service your partners you have um, so we utilize our website to you know, again drive people to the website you know tickets are all digital now right we don't print tickets out anymore no everything's digital right um, so those things that we invested in this year were um, how's that ex that experience at the line you know we also have to be safer oh yeah so we invested in new uh, magnometers sure. uh, so when people come through but it's quicker easier right. than what last year was um, we have brand new uh, ticketing pedestals so when someone walks up with their phone they don't need someone to scan they can just put their phone it's like going to the airport right. <laughs> uh, we just invested in a whole new slew of those uh, things so really driving people to our website to understand what we're doing um, and then we can capture what their you know their wants and their needs are and they can communicate to us we're just as of today putting a service on uh, an email service online just a concierge service yes. so all right you bought your tickets but you really want some information on restaurants and hotels and you know what are the um, experiences in Charleston that you can do what are the beaches you can go right. to all of those things people have a lot of questions so we have a dedicated email um, called concierge at credit one uh, open.com hmm. credit one Charleston open.com and they can reach out and ask us any question we're gonna get the answer we might not have it right away but we'll find them yes um, but just trying to provide that service instead of making a phone call reach out to us right. because the phone call can take a ton of time and we don't have a ton of people no. but we also we always have time to answer emails and get and people are sometimes more well thought out when they put it in an email right. format as on a phone they're like boom 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 and the emotional so, and all yeah. that yeah so we're trying to really make it easier for our fans to communicate with us and we're just using technology to do all of that so Bob what are the guests wants and needs right now when it comes to this this tournament they want ease they want shorter lines mm. they want more options uh, for food and beverage yes. they want it so they they want it easy they want it really high quality and they want it now right, right? that's <laughs> so now we're never going to be perfect at that sure. but how can we do everything in our power to make that experience a better one yes sir and, and, and let me ask you this too how is the credit one charleston open is actually attracting and engaging and retaining new generations of diverse tennis participants at all levels so you come to our opening weekend okay what we're an anomaly on the professional tennis tours and all my all my the tour will tell me that the tournament directors and players will tell us that opening weekend for us is what we call a family weekend and we want kids out here yeah. we want kids out here so you know ownership loves that too he, oh, yes. the one thing he loves about us is we're gonna have on that Saturday and Sunday where there's great tennis going on we don't have it in stadium but we have these qualifying matches on all the others so we have a great fan zone we have clinics we will bring in all of these things for kids to do be it face painting yes. or jump castle oh, yes. we want them actually out here because you know what if one of them picks up a racket right they're hopefully going to play but our goal is to put a racket in their hands while they're here introduce them to tennis it's a great sport it's a healthy sport um, so family weekend we will have over that weekend 10,000 people out here mostly kids and families okay um, and then as we go all week we are running um, uh, school field trips so we bring kids out here and we have a methodology come out watch a little tennis we'll feed them while they're here we'll put them through our fan zone um, so all week we have clinics and kids field trips everything so and by the way yes sir all tickets are free for kids right. right why do we do that because they are our next generation of fans and right and we hope mom and dad comes with them um, but if a kid's coming out here and wants to be here it's free <laughs> let me ask you this too Bob what else are you all inve investing in to actually enhance more of the fan experience? Uh, well, the app was a, a big, big deal. Um, we're building a brand new deck out here that uh, I'll show you on our way sure. out. Um, we just invested in a brand new lawn. Oh, yeah. um, putting live music everywhere that we can possibly put it. Uh, our video boards and our video production levels have gone up exponentially over the last couple of years. So we, we capture a lot of video that week of and we produce it and we repurpose it that same week. Um, so everything's live and into it and you know even our daily newspaper and I mean there, when you finish a day you'll get a write-up from us about what happened that day that includes video that includes pictures everything but it also includes everything that's coming the next day in this world it's got to be now mm -hmm. it's got to be fast, fast and so that's what we're providing and so everything we're investing in I say was is video is the production of those videos um, the technology on the website the technology and the apps 
that's where we're putting our investments to make that fan experience better. As a matter of fact, what's your game plan to engage in constant evaluation of current investments, exercise fiscal responsibility, and explore opportunities that enable you to actually diversify your revenue streams? When did you write that question? <laughs> <laughs> that was a very well... So you get to read that. I can't read anything right now, Quentin. But that, face that was a big question right there. Let's start that again. Okay. <laughs> no worries. But what is your game plan to engage in constant evaluation of current investments, exercise fiscal responsibility, and actually explore opportunities to enable you to diversify your revenue streams? Sure. So... Um, we're always constantly evaluating what we do. So if, if we look at a new option, um, something new that we think is going to work, we build a business plan around it, and then we prove it out, right? Here's what we have to do to pay for this over. It might not be one year, it might be two years, it might be three years. We're always looking at how we spend an enormous amount on rentals, all right? Are there ways that we could purchase, and then maybe in three years we're not renting, but we own, so it pays for itself. We do that every year. Um, it's very important to continue to look at that. Um, and then ownership evaluation. Ownership evaluation is definitely fiscal, but it's also um, what that experience is like. And it's important to um, Mr. Navarro and the Navarro family that we put out best in class. Yes. And so that, that combines, yes, a fiscal responsibility, but also what that experience is like. And we always want that experience to be first class. So it's kind of a combination there. Right. It's not all about fiscal. Right. It's about the overall experience. And we are a big believer if we continue to improve the overall experience, everything else will follow behind that. And it's proven out that way. But we evaluate everything all the time. We build a P&L on everything. And then also, we also are looking at anything we rent, can we buy? So what are you looking at that you can actually buy now? Tents, mm. furniture. Mm. Um, we just bought, the, so the magnometers and the pedestals and mm. things like that are things we rented, right? But the magnometers, for example, we could buy and they're gonna pay for themselves in a year, yeah. right? So those are the type of things. And, and uh, this is the tough one here, maybe off balance uh -oh. question. Hold on, you're going to throw me off balance at this moment in Again? time? Again? Okay. <laughs> uh, what exactly is your long-term price money formula for the next five to ten years? What? Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> I know. My price money formula. And uh, I need to understand exactly what you mean. You know, obviously you all give out prizes and whatnot. So what? what oh. Yes, sir. Oh, so prize money formula. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, so sir. our prize money is dictated by the tour. So every year, but now, so it's also based on a formula, okay? So every year we're at the, at the very least going to go up 3% in our prize money, no matter what. Okay, we have a good year or a bad year. Okay. Now, if we have a really good year like we did in 2022, sure. that affects the prize money. I feel like our prize money will probably go up 5 to 6%. Okay. All right, so you want to get in a real conversation right now, Quinn? <laughs> and here's the real conversation, okay? Because it's a thing we have every day, sure. and that's equal prize money yes. for men and women. So a 500 level event on the men's side is X, and the prize money at 500 women's level is Y, and it's not equal. We have equal prize money at four events in the Grand Slams. Those are the much higher events. Um, and this comes down to the revenue that's driven by those events. So, and I don't think this is right, but it is reality. Reality is the men bring in about 12X in media rights than the women. So whose problem is that? That's fans, that's sponsors, that's, that's not the tournament itself. Um, so we are actually engaging partners to help us get to equity quicker than maybe the tour would want us to be. So we have those conversations with partners. Do you want to be our partner? Let's grow this business together so we can get to an equal place sooner than maybe others would, right? But right now, 500 on the men's side pays a lot more on the women's side. It's our job to fix that. So we're looking every day on how do we fix that. And what partners would be ideal for that going forth? Oh, anybody who wants to, you know, wants to have a conversation about that in the marketplace, in the business place. Yeah. Um, anybody who wants that conversation, we're here to have it. Um, anyone who wants to be our partner, come on, we're here for you, and and we're gonna we're gonna participate in that as well. The more money we make, the more money goes back into our prize money. That's the way the formula is built already. Right. But if we can accelerate that with our partners, we're gonna do that. And quickly, Bob. For those who want to get tickets right now, where should they go? See, that's the best question you asked all <laughs> <laughs> No, if you go to creditonecharlestonopen.com, 
every ticket option is at your fingertips. You can always give us a call, but if you go to our website, you can find everything you need. Um, and, and, and right now, for the next 80 days, you're going to see updates on players. You're going to see updates on our fan experience. Um, so keep plugging into us, but tickets are easy. Um, and we have options for everybody, be it daytime, nighttime. We're really, you know what we're really doing well right now is daily doubles. So mm -hmm. that's someone who wants to come for a couple days and buy day and night sessions. They can't be with us all week, mm -hmm. but maybe if they're coming like on a Wednesday, Thursday and want to buy tickets on the, you know, for the day and the night session, day and the night session, you can do that. But we're going to provide as many opportunities for people to buy tickets, make it easy. And again, I will, you know, family weekend is that opening weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Stadium's not open, but we have four courts going with world-class tennis and a family experience that will be second to none. That is amazing. Can't wait yeah. for it. Yes, I'm sir. Ready for it. Well, Bob Moran with the Credit One Charleston Open. Thank you so much for your time. And again, welcome back to Quentin's. Thank Sports you. Ups. This was a pleasure, Quentin. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you coming out here. Yeah, you're welcome. Anytime. Thank you. You're welcome. Awesome.